Hello, everybody, and welcome to Lesson 5, The Animals of the Temperate Deciduous Forest Habitat. And if that sounds like a lot, it is, but you'll know what all of it means by the time we're done. First, I want to go over what climate is. Climate is the type of weather a place has over a long period of time. Another word is species. Species is a group of living things that have similar characteristics, like there are 70 different species of whales. Another is to store as a verb, something that we do. We store means to save things for future use, like a squirrel stores nuts. And temperate, the word temperate means not very hot, not extremely cold, so not the desert and not the Arctic, you know, like where we live, like where you see this picture, this video being taken. It's it's temperate. It gets cold, but uh, not as cold as the Arctic, and it gets hot, but not as hot as the Sahara. And the final word is territory. That's an, uh, the area that an animal or a group of animal lives in. Okay, now the next thing we're going to see is a map Okay, now not all forests are the same. The forest you're going to learn about today is a temperate deciduous forest. Temperate meaning it doesn't get too hot or too cold, and deciduous meaning a lot of the leaves, you know, a lot of the trees lose their leaves in the fall. So that's all temperate deciduous means. Now these kinds of forests exist all around the world, and where you see them highlighted on your map here, that's where they are. We, have, we live in a temperate deciduous forest. So the video you just saw of a lake and a forest, that is right around here. And, you know, a lot of the leaves lose, uh, drop from the trees. Um, even pine trees, you know, they lose about half their needles in the fall. Now today you're going to hear about a temperate deciduous forest in the United States. And Rattenboro has traveled to Tennessee and North Carolina, and he's going to tell you all about it. Rattenboro here with the next thrilling chapter in our Habitat Read Alouds. After looking at some very exotic, that means strange and fascinating, Far away places, I thought, we could visit a habitat that is quite common in many parts of the United States. This is a forest habitat. You know you are in a forest habitat when everywhere you look, there are trees all around you. Now, you may be wondering why I'm up in a tree. Well, I am enjoying the wonderful view of a forest in North America. There are over 500,000 acres of forests in this national park. One acre, by the way, is about as big as an American football field. Many of you have seen forests like this before. You may be familiar with some of the plants and animals that live here in the Smoky Mountains. A lot of them live in many other places all over the United States. There are many different kinds of forests in the world. The forests of the Smoky Mountains are called temperate forests. A temperate forest grows in an area that has four seasons, including a warm summer and a cold winter. And it receives steady rainfall throughout the year. Now, even though these forests have a warm summer and a cold winter, temperate means it's not extremely hot or extremely cold like in other areas. You can think of those other areas. Brr. This forest is also called a deciduous forest because it is full of deciduous trees. Trees, bushes, shrubs that lose their leaves every fall and then grow leaves again when the temperatures start to rise in the spring. The temperate deciduous forest has a much friendlier climate than the other habitats we've learned about, and it can support many different kinds of plant and animal life. By the way, the climate of a habitat is the type of weather a place has over a long period of time. A temperate deciduous forest is made up of broadleaf trees like oak, maple, beech, and elm. Broadleaf trees have broad, wide leaves. 
These trees grow very tall and are thickly covered with wide leaves that are better at collecting sunlight than trees like pine trees that have needles instead of leaves. Under these taller trees, there are saplings, young trees, as well as shrubs and bushes and plants that bear or produce fruit. Closer to the ground grow shorter plants like grasses and wildflowers. I'm going to start at the top and work my way down so I can show you this wonderful habitat. The tree I am standing in now is an oak tree. This oak is very tall and is covered with leaves and acorns. An acorn is a seed, and if it gets planted in the forest soil, it can grow roots and a shoot, which will eventually turn into an oak sapling. Like the saguaro cactus in the desert and the acacia tree in the savanna, oak trees provide shelter and food for many animals. Owls, woodpeckers, mice, and foxes make their homes in the branches or around the roots of the oak tree, and acorns are food for squirrels, birds, deer, and other animals. Look at that tasty insect. Well, the oak tree is home for hundreds of different kinds of insects, like the stink bug and the weevil, which eats its leaves and its acorns. Moths and butterflies lay their eggs in the tree. Other insects, like ants and timber beetles, live under the bark of the oak or in dead and fallen trees. Just as insects are drawn to the oak as a source of food, so are animals that feed on insects. Spiders and all kinds of birds hunt for tasty bugs among the branches of the oak tree. Bears and other animals find food here too. The oak tree is an amazing habitat in itself. Down on the forest floor, there are all kinds of shrubs, the fruits of which are food to many different species of animals, including rabbits, chipmunks, deer, and omnivores, like bears. A species is a group of living things that have similar characteristics. The animals that I just mentioned are all different species. Mmm, some of these blueberries are perfectly ripe, and they taste delicious. What a tasty treat. And down here on the ground, I can see wildflowers, grasses, and clover. These plants, which cover the forest floor, are home to many types of insects and are food to grazing animals such as deer and mice. One interesting thing about the plants in a forest is that they often grow leaning in the same direction. Isn't that strange? Hmm, why do you think plants might be leaning in one direction? Well, they have to do that because they're looking for sunlight. The leaves of the big trees get all the sun. Only a small amount of sunlight gets through to the forest floor, that's why it's so shady in here. The plants down here have to grow toward the sun so they can get enough light to make the food they need to survive. You may have seen this fuzzy green stuff growing on rocks, trees, and the ground in the forest or in the countryside. It looks like a carpet, almost. Mosses are small green plants that grow in clumps in damp and shady places. They cover parts of the forest floor, like a carpet, and are home to many small animals and insects. It feels really soft to walk on, thick and spongy, and it tickles a little bit. Now we're going to take a look at some of the animals that live here. Great Smoky Mountains National Park is home to almost 400 different kinds of animals. Animals that live in the temperate deciduous forest are adapted to living in a habitat with four seasons. Let's start with a mighty oak tree again. This amazing tree is home to many animals, and I'm standing at the next nest of one of them, the gray squirrel. This little animal is covered in warm gray-brown fur with a white chest and a long bushy tail. Squirrels live in holes in the trunks of trees or in nests high up in trees like this one. Their nests are built from twigs, leaves, moss, and grass. Squirrels use their strong back legs and their sharp claws to help them leap from tree to tree and run up and down tree trunks, and they use their tails to help them balance. Squirrels are omnivores and spend most of their time looking for food. You remember what omnivores are. They eat meat and they eat vegetables. The squirrel eats mostly acorns from an oak tree, but it also eats nuts, mushrooms, berries, seeds, and it even eats bird eggs and insects. This squirrel might nibble on an acorn or two now, but it will also bury and store acorns underground so that it will have them in the winter when other food is hard to find. A barred owl. 
lives in a hole in this oak tree. I have to be careful because owls are carnivores. Unlike the elf owl in the desert, this owl happens to enjoy eating rats. This owl also eats other small animals like mice, insects, and even other birds. Owls have very good hearing and excellent eyesight, which allows them to find their prey easily in the thick forest. Owls are nocturnal, which means they only come out at night. So I have some time before this one is ready for a late night snack. Hold on. What's that scratching sound coming from below? It's a black bear. Black bears are common in North American temperate deciduous forests, and there are more than a thousand in this national park. They are large animals. They weigh as much as 14 first graders would weigh all together. And when they stand on their hind legs, they can be taller than a person. Bears are omnivores and hibernate or sleep during the winter in hollowed out trees or caves. When they are hibernating, bears use less energy and do not need to eat any food for many, many days. This is a good thing because during the winter, the foods that bears eat are scarce and hard to find. Bears are covered in thick black or brown fur and they have sharp claws to strip the bark off trees which uncover the insects that live there. The word bark in this sentence means the outer covering of a tree. This bear will use its long sticky tongue to get into every crack to hunt out the insects and they'll make a delicious meal for him, I'm sure. I just saw a deer through the trees. Deer often live in the temperate deciduous forest because it is such a good place to stay hidden, but they often hunt for food in neighboring meadows. This is a buck. A buck is a male deer, and we can tell because male deer have antlers. Did you know that a buck's antlers fall off every year and will grow back again? Bucks mark their territory by stripping the bark of trees with their antlers. Uh, territory is an area in which an animal or a group of animals lives. Animals often protect their territory and try to keep other animals out. Bucks also use their antlers for fighting with other male deer. This deer is a white-tailed deer. Its coat is tan right now, but in the winter it will change to gray-brown, and it has patches of white on its underside. This helps the deer to be camouflaged or hidden in the environment. How do you think the change in color from tan to gray-brown with patches of white in winter helps to camouflage the deer? Deer graze on grasses and eat tree leaves, berries, and acorns, among other things. They mostly come out to feed at night when the light is low, and they rest during the day. This white-tailed deer has strong, long legs which are good for running and jumping and escaping from predators like wolves, coyotes, and people. The temperate deciduous forest's climate can support many different plants and animals because it has four seasons. It is called temperate because it never gets too cold, like the Arctic, or too hot, like the Sonoran Desert. There is a steady rate of rainfall throughout the year, so plants can grow and animals can have food and water to keep them alive. This is just one of the many kinds of forests in the world. Next, we're going to take a look at another kind. It's going to be very different in a lot of ways. I'll see you on our next adventure. Well, thank you, Rattenborough. That was very interesting, and especially because I live in the same temperate zone that he was studying. We all do. It's a temperate deciduous forest. Now, are all forests the same, or are there different kinds of forests? Sure, there are different kinds, right? And in that read aloud, you heard... This squirrel might nibble on an acorn or two now, but it will also bury and store many acorns underground, so it will have them in the winter when other food is hard to find. Say the word store with me. Yeah, that's an easy one. Store means to save for future use. When warm weather arrives, I store my winter hat and gloves in a box in the closet. Do you sometimes store food? What other things do you store? Talk to someone in your family and try to use the word store when you tell about it. Now, what's that word we're talking about? Store. That's right. 
All right, well, I can see that there have been some, uh, on this picture, looks like there have been some animals that have been eating in this habitat. Hmm, how can you tell that they were not bear or deer or... I have a funny feeling there were humans here.